We will now begin recording the interview with Christine Hawkins. The recording takes place on the 19th of November at Cardiff University in the John Percival Building. The volunteers present are Liz and Kayleigh, and this recording has been collected as an oral history and will be part of the Chronicle Project, a project led by VCS Cymru and funded by the Heritage Lottery Fund. So if you could just begin by stating your name and tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, my name is Christine Hawkins. Um, I'm a volunteer supervisor of councillors and I'm a previous volunteer of counsel uh, volunteer councillor and um, sometime guerrilla yarn bomber. Brilliant. Um, so what forms of volunteer activities have you um, done in the past? In the past? Present? So in the past I've done um, things like I've been a treasurer for an Oxfam shop. Um, I've, as a child, I used to do things like um, sell pictures for the NSPCC, um, which you couldn't do these days, obviously, because nobody wants to be going around hawking around uh, pictures of children. Um, and um, I've done a lot of things through the church, but I think most of my volunteering has been more recently in order to get my counselling certificate. Oh, brilliant. So what organisations specifically have you volunteered with? So uh, in the Cardiff area, um, I volunteered with Inroad Street Drug Project. So I worked with them for three years um, as a volunteer cognitive behavioural therapist. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about your role in these certain organisations? Yeah. So um, Inroads is a, an organisation that helps people to um, who are uh, um, have drug or alcohol misuse helps them to stay healthy and then when they're ready um, they, can, they help them to come off their substance of, of choice and um, those that are off the medication or sorry off their drugs or off their alcohol can be referred for counselling services and as a cognitive behavioural therapist that's where I used to come in. So um, uh, clients will be referred to me and um, we would go through a, a programme of counselling. It was not time limited, so um, they had as long as they needed. So uh, for some clients I worked with them for a few weeks, some for a few months and one I worked with for over a year. Um, so clients had a, a number of issues that they were working with. So although you know, they might be have a problem with alcohol or drugs, that wasn't always the first issues. It might be that they had um, PTSD or it might be that um, uh, there was abuse back in their childhood. So we'll be working with some quite serious stuff. And the nature of the, the clients are that um, they live a quite a chaotic lifestyle. So um, getting clients to turn up used to be quite difficult. So that will be problematic. But I used to spend a lot of time in roads when waiting for clients or uh, hanging around um, because clients hadn't turned up. So I sort of got to see what the organisation did. And it's a really nice place to work. So I really enjoyed it. I quite miss it when, I'm, when I've not been there. Oh, brilliant. So um, what motivated you to volunteer in the first place? Well, I didn't have a choice really because um, I wanted to be, um, wanted to get my qualification in CBT and in order to do the postgraduate diploma you have to get 100 hours of counselling in, uh, individual counselling. And the only way you can do that is to get a placement, um, and which is a placement with a volunteer organisation. And I tried loads of different organisations. Nobody was interested in me. I had to have experience first. And my experience was working um, paid as a, a weight management counsellor, so working with groups of 12 people who were obese um, or morbidly obese. Um, so Inroads was the only place that would take me based on the experience that I had. So I went to, to work with them. So I had to do that and I got my 100 hours in then. I also did some volunteering in uh, Newport and also with MIND in um, Newport Road. Oh, that's brilliant. So what did you do with MIND in Newport Road? So um, with MIND, I worked with them for about uh, nine months, it must have been. So again, it was about getting the hours up. Um, so I didn't complete module three, I failed module three, so I had to retake it, so that's why I went back to, went to join MIND, so I got some different experience. And I worked with clients who were depressed. So MIND um, take a lot of volunteer counsellors there, I think they have up to eight volunteer counsellors that they um, supervise there. And um, counsellors will be working, volunteer counsellors are working either daytime or evening. And um, I worked um, one afternoon a week with them and I just had two clients to work with. 
and I arranged my own supervision in, uh, because they were full so I had to do that and pay for that. Oh brilliant, so even if people aren't striving towards um, gaining a qualification would you recommend that more people volunteer within the community? Um, well certainly you get a lot out of it, um, I mean I, I felt I made a difference um, certainly with the council I made a difference so people were able to to um, live better lives um, think and behave differently which is how we work with cognitive behavioural therapy and I think with people who've, who were depressed at mind I think um, I was able to make some shifts in their thinking and um, thinking about one particular person um, was suicidal so we did a lot of work around that so you know, I like to think I'm involved in keeping her alive. So do you think volunteering benefits um, the people who are volunteering, <coughs> sorry, as well as those who you're helping? Um, well? well, for me, it helped me because it enabled me to get my uh, diploma. Um, for other people, they get a lot out of it because um, you are making a difference to people, a difference to, to you know, the world that we live in. Um, so what does volunteering mean to you? Um, well, it means um, a lot of hard work for nothing. Um, it means uh, giving up your time, but ultimately I get something out of it. So like with my supervisor's course now, I'll, I'll uh, be a qualified supervisor at the end of it. Um, and I got, my, I got my master's in counselling as a result of it. So it means that, it means that I get, got qualifications, but also it means I, I got a sense of well-being as well. Brilliant. Have you lived in Cardiff all your life? No, I moved to Cardiff in 2008. Oh, so is it mainly Cardiff that you've done your volunteer work in? Um, yes, uh, but I did um, volunteering when I lived in Cleethorpes, which is in the northeast of, of England, or the middle east of England. And um, uh, that's where I worked with Oxfam Shop, so I did that for four years. Brilliant. Do you think you'll be um, taking part in any other projects in the future? I suspect when I retire I will do. So at the moment I'm working with five voluntary, uh, four voluntary organisations to get my supervisor's um, qualification and one uh, I'm working with the NHS as well for free. Um, so I'm doing all that and I think when I've done that I want a little break from doing voluntary work but when I'm retired I'll certainly do that because um, I think it's really important as part of your positive mental health to keep doing something all the time to to keep, um, uh, uh, to have something you do every week, that's really important. To mix with other people, that's really important because it's so easy to get um, involved in yourself and not involved with the outside world and I think that keeps things um, realistic. Absolutely. Do you think volunteering brings the, communi the wider community closer in general and it makes people understand each other better? No, I don't, no. I think uh, volunteering tends to be done in pockets, yeah. all sort of disparate from each other. Yeah. yeah. Um, is there anything else you'd like to say about um, uh, Well, the other thing that I did was I volunteered with a group of my friends, we call ourselves Welsh Woolly Women, and we did a yarn bombing exercise. So we, the first time we um, uh, bombed a, a tree in Pontcanna and we, we um, hung daffodils from it for St David's Day. And the second time we worked with the bay and we dressed uh, through their statues there. So we dressed them in summer gear for the summer. And um, the, there's a statue there with uh, there's a woman sort of sitting on a fence pointing out towards the sea and a guy with his hands in his pockets and a dog and we dressed all of them and my involvement was to be in charge of the shorts project so I, me and two or three other women um, got some, uh, just some shorts I had to keep going down every now and again and measuring to make sure I got everything right and, and then one morning um, with, this, uh, with the um, organisation's agreement we went down and dressed it all about six o'clock in the morning and then left it. So what is that organisation in name of? We're called Welsh Woolly Women so it's quite um it's not a sort of a, uh, an organized group of women but we're women who get together and we knit and crochet together oh, okay. sounds brilliant so you've mentioned that you've done lots of different types of volunteering yeah um how would you compare the different types of volunteering that you've done um so uh, different counts counseling organizations were very different um so you had to get to learn um, the way they did things 
Um, so it usually involved going to a, a, um, an induction um, uh, for the organisation and also having to learn you know, what were their procedures if you had somebody who was suicidal, for example, or um, somebody where, uh, who was showing that their children were at risk. So that was a big learning curve for me because each one was different. And then um, uh, uh, comparing the arts work to what I did with the um, uh, volunteer as a counsellor, very different. So we, we, um, when we did the tree, we didn't ask for permission, um, but we had to we had sort of bumped against um, uh, legislation and um, organisations. We wanted to do something like we wanted to dress the big statue of Dave Davies down in um, Barry, but the council wouldn't let us do that because it was a health and safety risk. So um, we then had to get permission from the centre at, at um, uh, down in the bay before we dress the statues there. But really, yarn bombers, what they do is they just go and do it. But amongst our group, there are a lot of people who don't like to break rules, you see, but I think we should break rules there. So both sorts have rules that you have to follow and um, sometimes pushing against them is a bit tricky. So do you feel that because you've done so many different types of volunteering that you've had a great experience of volunteering as a whole? Um, uh, I think um, what I've learned is that there are many, many types of volunteers. So I think mine's quite a, um, a narrow sphere. So um, sort of working with church type staff and say Oxfam, that's quite narrow. Um, and counselling is quite a narrow field. And there's so much out there that people can do that's very different. So no, I don't have a big, uh, wide experience. Mm. And what are your favourite memories? Um, from your volunteering? Um, from the yarn bombing, um, actually dressing the, the tree was really funny because we took our photos but held our backs to the cameras so that we couldn't be seen because we were supposed to be doing it as gorillas. And the same thing um, dressing the statues in the bay, we um, allowed our photos to be taken from behind but not as we were dressing it so that people wouldn't know who we were, although obviously I've let the cat out of the bag as to who <laughs> did one of them. Um, and so that was really funny and then um, other memories working with clients I think making big differences helped so some of the ones I, I mentioned like helping a client who was suicidal or working long term with a client um, uh, for me I don't like to because uh, I work privately now I don't enjoy working long term or I say I don't enjoy working long term with with people but actually I do because you build up a great relationship with a person and you can see them changing from being someone who's really not coping with the world or with whatever their issue is to being a, a fully formed person again and being able to tackle all sorts of things so thinking about um, those people making a difference was the things that are my favorite memories. So have you, as well as with clients, have you um, built strong relationships with your colleagues and um, other volunteers as well? Um, I think I had a good relationship at Inroads um, and um, I certainly have a relationship with the two people that run it. Um, so I've done, I actually did something else for them, think about it, when um, uh, after I'd finished working with them I made a blanket for them for the for, their, um, for them to use wherever they wanted. And I know it's on their therapy bed. So uh, I do pop in now and again, so I've got a good relationship with them. Um, mind, less so. Um, I think because the person who was in charge there uh, broke her arm and I wasn't kept up to date with what was going on. So there was a poor communication there. Um, and I've got a great bond with Welsh woolly women because you know we, we have great fun together and we do stuff together and you know uh, craft together. So have you seen um, other people like yourself progress from one type of volunteer into another and impacted the community? Um, I can't say that I have, no, sorry. No. And um, so you've obviously mentioned that you can sometimes um, come across difficulties in volunteering. So yeah. what has made you most frustrated um, in your past and present experience with volunteering? Um, uh, with counselling, I think the, the um, biggest frustration was clients not turning up for sessions because um, I get a little bit precious about my time. So, um, I, you know, I was given my time freely and yet people wouldn't turn up for sessions. And so I had to 
have a word with myself really because um, the type of clients that I was working with live very chaotic lives and often don't even know the time so for me to expect them to to know that they had their appointment was was a bit unrealistic um, so that was a bit frustrating and also what that did was that impacted on the how quickly I could get my hours in to complete my course um, fortunately I did get enough hours in in the end because I went to volunteer um, with the NHS in Newport and so I got more hours in that way so they were the frustrations and um, the legislation for the arm bombing that's frustrated me and people wanting to stick to legislation. Have there been times where because of how difficult um, working with people um, who are suicidal or in roads and mind I think so there have been times where you've found that it's made you upset or made you not want to volunteer? Um, it hasn't want me, made me not want to volunteer but what it has done is it's made me realise um, how um, how important it is to have risk assessments um, when you're counselling because you have to check that now I, I know I'm much more aware of that working with clients that I check out um, the risk to suicide um, but also it made me aware how responsible I was so if I have a client that commits suicide then I could potentially have to go to court about it and have to show my notes so um, uh, what I've done is I've taken that to supervision so a supervisor of counsellors are there to to um, take difficult cases to to make sure you're behaving ethically um, and um, uh, and that's helped me enormously so that's really helped with my growth as a counsellor and that's part of the reason why I'm training now to be a supervisor of counsellor because counsellors because I could see what difference they made yeah, of course. So do you think volunteering has changed you as a person? Uh, yes, it has. Yes, definitely. Because um, I'm much more, um, I'm much more uh, um, understanding of people who are, say, homeless or um, uh, are drug or alcohol addicted. Um, and um, I think that makes me a kinder person. And what I forgot to say was that something that me and my knit friends now do is um, I have a, a friend, or a dog walking friend, who works at um, the wet hostel in Cardiff and um, he uh, asked me one time whether I had any um, men's underwear or men's socks that were no longer needed because they need that for the, uh, for the guys who, work, who um, come to the uh, homeless hostel because especially in this weather when it's raining it's really difficult to keep their feet dry and keep their underwear dry so there's always a need for that so what I started doing was um, I now have a bag in the bedroom so whenever my husband's clothes get a little bit worn they go in there and um, I mentioned to my friends at um, my knitting group that this is what I was doing so now every now and again someone will say I'm cleaning out my husband's stuff do you want it and so they'll give me a bag full of stuff and I take it round to Jeff's and, and then he gives his feedback on on um, you know what what happens to the the clothes so for example uh, one of the women had cleared out a lot of really high quality shirts and that her husband no longer wore and so what Jeff did was he sort, sorts up through it all and he knows all the people that go there and he had a guy there who was a, um, a millionaire who had been a millionaire and had lost everything including his wife, home etc and so he, what he did was he sorted out the high quality shirts for him because he knew he'd really appreciate it so he tells me all these stories about what happens to the stuff and then I tell the, the women you see and that makes them generate more so that's really satisfying. Yeah, so do you think that even if someone doesn't want to commit um, time every week to being part of a certain organisation, there's more they could do just to help certain individuals such as the homeless in the community? Yeah, yeah, and um, I know there's lots of opportunities for people to volunteer at Christmas time, especially um, uh, because uh, of all these poor people who are homeless, that um, uh, it's a really tough time when you're not surrounded by your family. It makes you feel even more isolated. So yeah, there's lots more that people can do, and you can give stuff. Um, there's a charity out at the moment for um, homeless women uh, doing boxes of toiletries for homeless women because again, that's really hard to get hold of. Um, so. For a young person looking to go into volunteering, do you think that um, there are career prospects um, that could come out of it, that they could actually make a career and earn some money after volunteering? 
Um, in counselling there certainly is. So um, I trained with a lot of young people who worked with volunteer organisations and they've gone on to have their own businesses or uh, private, uh, worked, for, worked for companies as counsellors or they've, they've set up their own um, private counselling or businesses. Um, and um, I think as well people who volunteer in charity shops for example uh, it gives you good experience in lots of skills so working with people selling selling things and um, uh, and sorting through stuff so how did the yarn bombing come about um, well, I used to go weekly or twice weekly to a, a shop that existed down Cowbridge Road, which was a, a yarn shop, and um, a group of us used to meet there regularly, and one of the women said, do, do you fancy doing some yarn bombing? So we all thought, oh yes, this would be a really good idea, what can we do? So we did a bit of brainstorming, and um, I think it must have been sort of quite early in, in the year, so that's why we decided we would yarn bomb a tree with daffodils to represent St David's, St. David on St David's Day. So that's how we got involved, and we've um, uh, following that we did a bit of um, yarn, um, sorry, a bit of uh, brainstorming about what else we could do, you know, where else we could um, uh, uh, yarn bomb. So um, somebody had some involvement with Barry, and that's why we wanted to to do the um, uh, Dave Davis uh, statue. And then later on, when we were turned away from that, somebody suggested the about doing the statues down in the bay. So that's why we did that. So do you see a link with what you do in politics? Um, I think uh, there's a link in as much as um, you have to get round um, sometimes the council or whoever owns a property if you want to, to yarn bomb it. So for example, um, we talked about yarn bombing the statue in the middle of Thompson's Park. There's a, a statue of a little boy who's naked and we were going to put a pair of pants on him as a, as a joke. Um, but we were told no, we couldn't do that because of health and safety. So there's a, uh, it sort of rubs against politics. Um, but I know um, uh, in uh, Leicester, where they did a lot of yarn bombing, the police noted that following that there was a reduction in crime. So in that respect, I think it can affect politics. What would you say your biggest achievement has been so far? Um, with yarn bombing, it was the um, uh, doing the, the organising the um, group that did the shorts on the uh, uh, male statue. Um, and in counselling, in volunteer counselling, I think the, my best achievement was working with inroads and building up a relationship with the people there because I really enjoyed it because actually at the time um, I had a lot of family problems and I was going through depression myself. So um, being able to go there made me get out of the house so um, you know, I wasn't sitting at home feeling sorry for myself. It gave me another outlook and um, uh, there were really nice people there so it made me feel um, feel good so I could have a laugh there. And what advice um, or words of inspiration would you give to volunteers today? Um, I would say if you're just thinking about doing it just go and do it and there's lots of organisations that you can volunteer in and you, everybody has skills and I'm sure that whatever skills you have can be really well used to help out other people so just do it. Brilliant and finally how would you define volunteering? Uh, volunteering to me is giving up your time um, to help others and sometimes it can be um, for, uh, for your own benefit in the long run so you're, what you're doing is you're helping an organisation but helping yourself so for me it's about getting a qualification or it can be about helping yourself to feel better giving yourself a purpose in life Brilliant, so is there anything else you'd like to add um, that I haven't touched upon? Um, no, I think that's it. I think we've covered all the sort of things that I've done. Okay, thank you very much. You're very welcome.